All right, welcome. Watercolor and Five here. I'm Chris Petrie. Um, we're going to do some interesting uh, brush strokes today. Um, just started this new channel, Watercolor and Five. A lot of times I'm not able to get to all the interesting information that I want to share with everyone on my main channel, which is Chris Petrie, and that's just basically C H R I S P E T R I. Um, if you type that into YouTube, you'll, um, the YouTube search bar, you'll see all my videos there. And uh, I've been on YouTube about four years now, and I've been painting professionally for 15 years. Um, so I just want to share the exciting uh, uh, world of watercolor with everyone. And uh, so here's a, just a great place I can do some quick little uh, infomercials, so to speak, on um, the watercolor uh, medium. And uh, so let's get started. We're just going to do today some horizontal brush strokes. I think these are important to learn how to um, uh, do if you're going to be in a watercolor uh, uh, painting and you're trying to accomplish a certain section of the watercolor. You know, you're definitely going to want to have different brush strokes uh, and practice them bef as you're starting to um, work on your brush brushwork. Uh, so every watercolor artist should work on their brushwork without a, without question, because uh, watercolor is a fast medium, and you need to be able to use your uh, brush effectively in, in all situations when you're painting. And uh, there's no, nothing worse than being in the middle of an intricate part of your painting, and you don't have that uh, skill with your brush to be able to uh, navigate through there and, and be able to execute it quickly and, and uh, proficiently. So let's let's work on some brush strokes, and we'll have fun at it, and then we'll. Uh, We'll be prepared so maybe uh, after practice you know practicing these techniques over a year or two it'll just be locked in and we won't even have to practice it anymore we'll just it'll be a, a neat uh, it'll be a, a or just a, a natural reaction like driving a car we don't necessarily for driving cars right if we drive a car or we ride a bicycle we don't necessarily think about what we're doing we just do it because we've practiced it and done it so long it's just second nature so that's the same way with our brush strokes we want to make sure they're second nature the way we handle the brush and the paint and the water and this way uh, we'll, we'll do a much better job at our watercolor so here we just have our palette and we're going to try some uh, brush strokes here so i'm, I'm going to go in and get some uh, yellow ochre and some cadmium orange maybe a little bit of cadmium red and we'll make, do a little mixture of that, and then I'll roll my brush around a little bit to get a, a point, a nice point. And then we'll start out here at the, let's start out at the top. This way as we work down, our hand won't be sliding into the paint. So it's always good to keep that in mind. If your, you know, your hand should be resting on your paper as you're doing your brush strokes. And then you want to work on your watercolors so that you're not resting your hand into the paint. Uh, if you take breaks, then the paint will dry and you can rest your hand on your your paint as you work but if you're working uh, within a 15 or 20 minute time frame it's best to try to work if you're right-handed from the left to the right and from the top down and then you just reverse that if you're working left-handed you want to um, you'd want to start uh, at your right side of your painting and work left and the same you just you work downwards from the top down if at all possible but in Every situation, once you get used to working with the brushes and the watercolor, you'll it'll come second nature and you won't have to think about it too much. But try to just think a tiny bit about not resting your hand in the paint when you're working, because that'll that'll smudge everything up and make a make a problem. So all right, let's start out here. This is gonna be a narrow line. So we're gonna do a narrow line like this, and we're gonna go parallel. So all we do is we rest our hand on the paper, we get our brush into place. And then we just gently slide our hand across the paper with our brush barely touching, like this, so that we put down a nice line. And that's as simple as that. Then if you want, you can go in and maybe get some alizarin crimson, maybe a little bit of cobalt blue, just to make things more interesting. And then maybe just in a few spots, we touch down a little different color in there and let that mix in there. Okay. Now we're going to do, um, let's, let's go with a little larger line, maybe like a uh, three-eighths of an inch. This is about a quarter inch, uh, I mean an eighth of an inch. Let's go with three-eighths of an inch line. Uh, let's change colors. Let's do a blue and a green. 
So that's cobalt blue, maybe a little French ultramarine blue, and a little bit of olive green. Actually, that's sap green. Okay, let's do the same thing. Let's start here. We're going to make it a little larger, about an eighth of uh, three eighths of an inch line, and then we just start and touch down the brush and slide across slowly, and then lift up, and there we go. Now, while it's still fresh and uh, damp, the paper, we can go in maybe with a little yellow ochre, a little bit of red, and just touch in a little color, just to add some variety to this. We're just using some water in a water container. And I use a tissue just to dry off the brush a little bit, occasionally if there's too much water on the brush. Let's go with our third. Let's go with, um, we'll go with mineral violet and French ultramarine blue, a little bit of cerulean blue. And we're going to go for about uh, maybe, a, maybe a half inch. And there we go. We're going to press our brush down. And as you can see, we're getting a little thicker each time. Each time we're going across, we're just pressing down a little more, doing the same technique, resting the hand on the paper and sliding it across gently. And there we have it. <clears throat> okay, now let's try another. This one we're gonna try to use a little more water. Let's go in and we'll do um, some yellow ochre, burnt sienna, Burn umber. Okay, let's try this. Okay, brush is as wide as I can press down and get that width, about a half inch. I go in and get a little more paint. Perfect. Then we go in, maybe a little bit of orange and red. I'm just while it's damp, I'm gonna add a little bit of color. Okay, that's the horizontal brush stroke. If you're right-handed, you're going left to right. And if you're uh, left-handed, you're gonna go the opposite direction. And your, your paints would be on the other side over here. And you would go to the left. All right, I would practice these. Practice these as much as you can. Try to get the, the four different um, size lines, you know, very, very thin, a little thicker, thicker yet, and then pretty wide. And then, of course, this is a number uh, six brush. As you get larger, and you bump up and you use larger brushes, obviously you're gonna, you're gonna be able to get really large, wide um, brush strokes with these round brushes. So this is just a simple round watercolor brush, Kalinsky Sable hairbrush. You can use um, uh, synthetic hairbrushes too as well. Buy the best uh, equipment you can for your budget and uh, that'll be uh, fine. All right, everyone, we'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.